The kind of mineral resources we have in our country is enough to take care of everybody in that country. We should not have a single poor person in Sierra Leone. But unfortunately, we are not given the free will to make decisions on our own mineral resources. There's always Big Brother who decides. And when you fight and say, no, we are not going to do this, they use the system to stop you. It's either they set you up with the opposition and they will be supporting the opposition against you from the back or they cause unnecessary chaos in your country so that you are not able to even govern your own people. They will do things to make you not to uh, be functionable. And of course, any country that don't have peace cannot develop. You have to have peace before you talk about development. I'll give you a simple example about Sierra Leone. Every mining company that is in Sierra Leone today is owned by a foreigner. Every mining company. If it's not the Chinese, it's the American, it's the British. Our electricity, Bumuna, is run by the British. And we still don't have light. We're looking for light, electricity. If you don't have electricity, how can you talk about education? How can you talk about health facility? How can you talk about improving the infrastructure of your country? We don't have electricity. Now, do we actually even have proper water, pipe bone water, so that our kids will not be sick? We don't have those facilities. Why, with all the minerals we have, there is a cap you put before my husband became the president of Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone was benefiting. They said, uh, what's the word? 0.000.1%. What is that? Basically, a company can take as much as $100 million out of the country in terms of minerals, and then they can just give the country $10,000. Now, what will $10,000 do for our health system? What is $10,000 do for our educational system? And these are the things I believe that are stopping Africa from progressing. We don't have a say. The sense about us celebrating independence, I don't know why we celebrate independence, because we are not free. That is my own take. I'm not speaking also on behalf of the government of Sierra Leone, nor am I speaking on behalf of His Excellency the President. I am speaking as Fatima, as a citizen of a country who believes that things need to change. I join you in that sense. I'm Jesse, I'm a person. Fatima is a person. Mm -hmm. We agree. I see you. I value your perspective and I want to find a way forward. Right? Neither of us likes the status quo. No. We see women and girls being oppressed. We see patriarchy stronger than ever, and we see colonial forces that persist without accountability. So it's one part to elucidate the problems that come from that. The many sequelae of extraction include inadequate remaining resources to develop as a state, to do all the things that people want to do for themselves. Provide education, provide health care. So I wonder, as we think just as two citizens of the world committed to a better humanity, where do we go from here? Do you have any practical ideas about where we might start? <laughs> or collective ideas that we might gain support for? I feel Africa, we, patriotism is very important. You have to love your country to want your country to be a better place. Patriotism, I think we need to be, we have to have that sense of patriotism in our countries. And um, our leaders also should be subjected to that. You know, it is not only when uh, you were talking about election and then everybody come out and celebrate and after election, that's it. Accountability. Who accounts for what is happening? Who is the one who is changing the narrative of what is happening? Like I said, as a first lady, I am not part of a government system. I am a wife of a president. So when I speak, I speak on behalf of the people because I understand what the people are going through. At the end of the day, I'm not being paid salary, so and I cannot be fired either. 
So that's the, the, the advantage. That's the advantage of being a first lady. But I believe that for Africa, what is happening in Africa today, it need to change and it need to change now. There is no time like now because for Sierra Leone, we now have a president who believe that we cannot wait for other people to come and develop us. We cannot wait for another country to come and prescribe how our country should be run or what we need in our country. You know, this divide and rule, if you're close to China, we will not come to your country. If you're close to America, we will not come to your country. I mean, the fight that is between England, Europe, America, China, Russia is not a Sierra Leone fight. That's not our problem. We are fighting for our daily bread. We are looking to have education, just like America. We are looking to have good health facility, just like Europe. We are looking to have governance structure where a one single person cannot be the dictator of a nation. That's what we are looking for. And in that process, we are going to be allies to everybody who wants us to grow. But if we now align ourselves with someone, and then this other person now is feel offended that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm coming from China now. I flew in, I mean, I've gone around the world to get to Boston, you know. I went to China and then come here. I will, before here, I went to England and then flew into America. For me, I am not restricted where I should go or who I should be talking to. I am going around the world to see a country that sees Africa not as uh, uh, and not just as an ally of what you'll be getting from us, but a country that sees Sierra Leone as partners and treat us with respect. You cannot be coming to our country and take everything that will make us develop and then you still treat us as inferior people as if we don't know what we're doing. I think that is wrong. You know, we're looking for partners that value us people that will come to our country and say, you know what, this country has suffered enough, they need to grow. We were once the atom of Africa. Every country within Sub-Saharan Africa used to come to Sierra Leone for our education. And today, what can we be proud of? We cannot talk about education in Sierra Leone because they've ruined that for us. Everything that has empowered Sierra Leone has been ruined. And now we have a leader who wants to fix everything there is a problem. In Africa, you should not have a leader that is assertive, a leader that knows what his people want, a leader that wants to change the, what is happening. The moment you have that, it's everyone's target. And then they find reason to slow you down, they find reason to stop you, and they use that system of corruption. They use corrupt people, they use negative people, they use unpatriotic citizens to come after a government who is doing what is right for a system. I think we need to address those issues. Unfortunately, I don't know who I, who, I mean, um, I'm very good at name calling, but at the moment, I don't know who I should be screaming at. I think